here with Tom Shields. Tom, break down that that uh, that second match for the LA Current for me. How'd you feel about it? It was good. I think we're in a good rhythm. I think more importantly than anything, like the group's getting along really well. Ben Lee in uh, manager position and David Marsh, uh, Kim Bracken, Jack Roach and the coaching staff. And everyone's kind of segmented out their roles pretty quickly here. And the group's attached to that. Everyone's pretty well organized and getting along really well. And I think that's just kind of folding over into a uh, positive experience and um, some good swims. It, we we saw Dave Durden there on the broadcast. What what was I didn't know Dave was going to be there. What what was the deal with that? <laughs> Neither did I until uh, very. I got sent the flight information actually, and his name was on there, and I was like, oh, Dave. Um, so I think this year, because of the uh, camp nature mm-hmm. of the um, league, uh, they're sending home coaches or they, there was options to bring home coaches and Durden opted in for that. He came for nine to 10 days and just kind of making nice. sure we're, um, on the right page, uh, with, uh, Abby, Katie, uh, Sully, Perno, uh, Murphy and myself, and then others have mixed in since. And, uh, just kind of like, there's a loose structure and flow to the weeks and it keeps changing obviously as the schedule keeps changing. So yeah, just good for him. He's a very, uh, I mean, he's a good coach regardless, but he's a very good, uh, the way he works is he likes to see it. He likes to see the flow and he kind of understands um, the rhythm. And I think that uh, was very helpful to have him out here and, and see that. And um, obviously he's, uh, I don't mean to speak for him, but he's a huge supporter of professional swimming. And this is one of the biggest steps forward, in my opinion, that we've had in this effort in a very, very long time. So um, it was awesome to have him here. That is cool. That's super cool. Uh, and it was, it was a fun little surprise to see him on the broadcast. I love how they brought him in. It was kind of like, wait a second, what are you doing there? But, um, so you said there's kind of like a loose structure to the week. Um, I, I think it's super interesting how you kind of try to get, you know, this like in the fall in the U S typically, this is when you get that bulk training in, but you know, when you're racing at the highest level possible every weekend, you can't really, crank out 10 K a day. Tell me about that loose structure and how it's changed just in these last couple of weeks. Yeah. Cause you know, cranking out 10 K a day has yielded such positive results in the last two years. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, I Love it. I'm from Cal. So I'm going to say, you know, the guys at home are, um, gearing up some fast as are we, uh, you know, we're doing it with suits on, um, under some lights and with some cameras on us and they're doing it, uh, in the quiet, um, cold mornings in, in the Bay Area. And I, I don't view there to be too big of a difference outside of the amount of hair I choose to have on my body. Um, and I, I don't mean to make that more or less than what it is. You know, I've been doing this every fall since 2013. So this is what, you know, professional swimming is for me. And I believe, uh, you know, my best years uh, throughout the fall have equated to my best years throughout the summer and spring. And so I don't subscribe to... Um, 1980s mentality if you don't mind me saying sure thing yeah uh so um was how do you how do you personally get ready to to race when you are in a chunk like this when you're racing so like you know every single weekend it's good i think you know uh sundays at home right now i would be diving and i would be thank you um they're doing a replay right now um (laughs) You know, I would be diving or I would be, I don't know, going to the beach and surfing, maybe popping a rib out, you know, being healthy, but quote unquote distracted. Whereas here we're locked in, you know, we're getting one day out of the water for six weeks, like uh, a pretty hard level, um, two out of every 10 days or more often. will equate to me being Americans are learning that. I think that the non-Americans or the people who've done the World Cups or uh, people who've done this system for a long, long time already know that. So I think it's just introducing this format to a new audience. And I think that um, specifically due to the short course nature and um, the time finals aspect of this, it's like 
you know, we don't get college dual meets. We don't get this, that, or the other anymore. And I think that pretending that racing once a month in some random city in the United States um, is all the prep we do is fake. Like that is obviously fake. Those meets are important. They're important for prep. It's cool to go through prelims finals, but that is not all of the, you know, that's not all that the U S national team ever did. And uh, I'm just finally happy. We're done pretending that it was. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's talk about your races uh, specifically. How have you felt you know, you're, uh, you're like undefeated in the hundred tuner fly so far. You, um, you took down some big opponents. How have you felt about your racing? Yeah. Um, good. You know, I think I'm executing well on what I wanted to do. I wanted to try and get out faster in the hundred and we did that. I happened to come home the exact same time to the hundredth, um, from one week to the other. And when you're able to build consistency, that's when, um, in my opinion, throughout my career, I've been able to see, um, development and in, like intention. And what I mean by that is like, now I'm able to you know if this continues, obviously things can come off the rail at any moment. And that's why you have to work hard in the sport. But, um, you know, if, if this trend continues and I'm hopeful that it does, and I'm trying to put in that work, I believe that, you know, when I'm able to put a six week segment together like that, whether or not it's resulted in something that you guys have access to or not, um, it lets me have that intention and I can choose what to do in my races and that's how you get better. And so that's what I'm focusing on right now. I'm trying to stay in between um, my lanes and um, you know, last weekend was hard for that. And that's one thing that Durden, when he was out here really worked with me on because whenever it's uh, you know, Caleb, all, you know, very much is probably the best swimmer in the world right now. But for uh, me personally, Leclo has had my number. I mean, if we've raced 75 times, he's won 55 of them at least um, if not more, you know, I'm probably significantly more. So it's just hard. It's easy for me to get distracted. You know, he's probably, um, you know, one of my favorite people in the sport as well. So we, we like to race each other. And so to do that right off the bat, it was very tempting to, you know, look across the lanes and like play the game and try and do that, all that stuff that doesn't matter. Um, so that was a good test and obviously results oriented speaking it was good technically but like 49.5 and 150.4 um are not my best performances even leading a cluster um not even close in the 200 so you know i'm trying to even in that same regard like stay in my lane and think about where i screwed up think about what mistakes i made think about this think about that and you know with these time final sessions we're finding that we're able to stay pretty heavy in the weight room um where in the World Cups, I probably wouldn't be lifting. So it's a hard comparison because the World Cups are prelims finals. Now they're three days, but when I had experience with them, they were mostly two days. Um, so it's a hard one-for-one -one comparison comparing four sessions of swimming to two because um, the workload is staying higher here. We're competing less often, but I'm finding that um, it's been harder for me, especially that first event each session because I didn't have a prelims that um, – hey, Use well um, that day. It's been, I don't know. So I'm, I'm trying to think through that. And obviously you don't really face that at the games because you have prelims and last finals. So you're facing an event two, two and a half times, depending on how you look at it before you, you hit a finals and um, blah, blah, you get what I'm trying to say. So it's, it's an interesting experience here. We never really faced this before as professionals in this setting, suited, relatively ready to go, blah, blah, whatever. So you're kind of like putting like, how I would say it, like a two pound cannon ball into a one pound cannon. <laughs> Obviously, into a cannon ball, two pound ball power, you don't know what you're doing with it. So I think that, especially on top of the water, when I look at my butterflies, like I just kind of like choose to slow down to try and hit the wall in a way that I have been in practice. So I'm trying to work through that um, in my days off. Nice. I mean, yeah, I think the most interesting part about this bubble to me is like you said, there's, uh, there's such a big set of circumstances that you're not facing anywhere else. And even, you know, comparing it to a world cup situation is hard because it's, it, it's, it's just a lot different. The timing's different. The prelims finals versus times finals different. Um, that's really interesting. Uh, so, so, and I was going to ask like, you know, how do you not get fatigued moving forward when you're racing that much and, and racing at such a high level that much. Um, 
especially when you're putting in work, like you said, um, you know, lifting heavy in the weight room, doing, doing, you know, a significant oh, well, amount of the pool. I mean, I think that's like, a. sorry. I think that comes down to like the want it factor or, or whatever you call it, motivation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, at this point in my career, uh, the opportunity to get, especially in my favorite course has been so sparse that, um, for me, it comes down to remembering that four weeks in and I'm kind of over it, or I just want to do this, or I just want to do that. It's like, no, like this is, you know, four months ago, I was very much in pain financially. Our entire country was, and I am not immune to that sport. I am not at that level financially. So I think for me, like, that's really a non factor. You know what I mean? It's like, this is so important. And this is my year that like, you have to stay on it and you have to stay in it. And um, the mental side of it, which is where I, what I really equate that to is obviously important. And you need to find little moments to release. Obviously we want to meet. So right now is in one people are walking by and saying hi, obviously. Um, <laughs> but you have to, you know, find that balance and find those moments. But outside of that, like we got to be here. You know what I mean? Like, this is what matters. Like there is no guarantee um personally that i am in tokyo there is no guarantee that it happens which i didn't tell you that um i don't know any inside information i'm just like looking at the world financially sure um so it's like this is here you know what i mean like the the birds are in the hand so like (laughs) you can't wave or you can't think about anything else at that point yeah um how how have you swam 50 back skins both times uh, how, what do you think of the alternate stroke skins? What is, what, how have you felt about the backstroke skins so far? I think, um, Ryan Murphy's done a fantastic job. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's amazing. I obviously respect everything about him. I've learned so much from him despite, um, being quote unquote older, um, the level of maturity he had bringing into Cal, the, what he's been able to do with the group with his own career has been astounding. And, um, you know, tonight he really showed that last week <clears throat> for whatever reason, I think we felt a little bit better. Um, you know, he and I, whenever we lift together, we get a little, uh, competitive is not the right way. We just push each other. That's, we work really well together. So last week, I think, you know, he was amazing for skins this week. He really showed his um, grit. And, uh, I think that's awesome. Uh, I'm very confident if I'm ever called on for fly, but I don't know. I don't know if that's, that'll ever be the case. Obviously I'm filling in for Zane um, and I'm doing a really poor job of doing that. (laughs) And uh, we're we're working on my start, but tonight it was my turn. That was bad. It's just, you know, I haven't focused on backstroke since the world cups in 2013 or 14. And that's been about it. So uh, I'm doing what I can. With the time that I have, I didn't think that I would ever face backstroke skin. So it's unfortunate. It's embarrassing, but I'm really happy that Murph is uh, there to hold us down. Definitely. Uh, cool. I won't keep you too much longer. What, what are you thinking moving forward into your next meet? Um, any adjustments you're making or, or what you're excited for in, into the next competition? Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, this week, obviously we're at a tighter turnaround. We're going to, um, address that in our training. Good night, guys. And um, outside of that, you know, we're going to adjust some lineup decisions based on what we think the end result might be for like semifinal seedings or, or who the team is next week. But, you know, fortunately for me, that's not my job. You know, I'm gearing up to try and get better and get more um, uh, significant point scoring where I can. Nice. Well, cool. Thanks a lot, Tom. I appreciate you taking the time. You've been listening to the Swim Swam Podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.